A scruffy man lounges against the wall with scarred arms folded. A sly smile playing on his face, he stares across at the Magister guarding him. Noticing you, he straightens and beckons for you to come closer. Watch your back, new fish. There's a murderer on board and I'd bet three months' pay it's this tramp Ifan. Rolling his eyes at the Magister's warning, the man named Ifan beckons again. He leans in and adjusts your collar with a sharp tug, balancing its weight so it no longer presses unpleasantly on your neck. He winks. Pinches less that way, right? Hocking a phlegmy gobbit in your general direction, the sullen magister settles back to his task of glowering at Ifan. And now, you. We used to know each other, more's the pity. I was his commander many, many, many moons ago. Isn't that right, Vic? Standing far back from Ifan, the tight-faced magister draws one finger across his throat in an elaborate fashion, but says nothing. Ifan grins, flashing pointed white teeth. Same as he was at 14 years old. Only difference is somebody gave him a bigger sword and now he's Johnny Big Pants. Long story. Maybe I'll tell you about it in the joy. Away from interested parties. No. The dead man, Finn, is it? I'd no business with him. And I wouldn't put a man down without good reason. He glances over at Magister Victor, who's staring back at him with pointed intensity. Damn shame sheer annoyance isn't reason enough. The joy, I've heard a lot. Nothing good. No surprise there, since Bishop Alexander runs the show. Wonder if we'll get to meet the Ringmaster himself. Easy now. I might think the same, but Vic here will blow a blood vessel if he hears you talking like that. What are you conspiring about over there? You! What's your name? Oh, don't mind him. Vic's just got a bee in his bonnet. And that bee is me. Name! Magister Victor looks at you suspiciously, then scrawls something illegible down in a tiny notebook. He scowls at you as he stows the notebook back in his voluminous robes. Away with you, at once. Ifan performs an elaborate pantomime of keeping quiet, one finger in front of his lips, as he leans back against the wall. This is not your business, Long Pig. Don't let this moss muncher talk to you like that. Especially a cheap skate like this un. Griff already knows she don't like to pay her fair share. An intense-looking man steps between the thug and the elf and rolls up his sleeves, revealing well-muscled and heavily scarred arms. You recognise him. It's Ifan, who you met aboard the ship on the way here. Just stand aside, won't you, mate? This is no business of yours. Lone wolves decide their own business. The thug freezes in fear for a moment, before shuffling back to the protection of his crony. Pie up, elf. No one shorts Griff, especially not one of you. Burrow looks you both up and down, sizing up your combined threat. Ah, get out of here. The both of you. You ain't worth a sweat of my brow anyhow. The elf smiles and bows to you in thanks. Follow me, before more of them trouble us. There is a safe place. Ifan rolls his sleeves back down. He nods at you, the shadow of a smile on his lips. Good work there. Good work. I can tell you've got chops. Say, you were on the ship here with me, weren't you? He stretches out one rough hand to shake yours. He grips your hand tight as a vice and shakes it, hard. Say, you don't look all that busy now that we're safely on dry land. I could use someone to watch my back, and it looks like you could use someone to watch yours. I've just got a small errand to run, and then I'll be looking to get the hell out of here while I've still got a neck to collar. How about we stick together until we get out of this place? He shrugs, looking off to the side. Mercenaries. It's a job. My job. He gazes around admiringly at the decrepit surroundings in which you find yourselves. Funny boy. Stick around a while. That'll change. Two heads are better than one. And when push comes to shove, four fists are better than two, right? Everyone needs to make a living. I make mine running errands. That's the truth. For me, for you, 
for everyone in this place. Why not help each other? He grins, sharp teeth glittering in the midday sun. So, before we hit the road, it's best if we decide battle strategies up front. Should keep more of our blood in. Survival's my main priority. I'll use every trick in the book to keep us alive. But if a wayfarer's not what you're after, I've got other skills. What do you need? Can do. Onwards. He scans the horizon for threats with one green eye, then nods back at you. Right you are. Lead the way. Tired of the view in here yet? I am too, I must say. Good to know someone's got your back when the going's tough. Well, I've got a contract to complete. After that, getting the hell out of Fort Misery seems the best option. I figure we track down my inside man, and then we take it from there. Ifan shrugs off his backpack and reaches into its depths. After rummaging around, he holds out a tattered page to you, upon which you can see a broken wax seal in the shape of a wolf's paw. Have a read of my contract and find out. Ah, you've read my contract. What does that look in your eye mean? He raises an eyebrow and folds his arms, appraising you. Me, not you. It's my contract but you can come along for the ride. Good to know. And likewise, with whatever errands of your own you have. Soon as I saw that glint in your eye, I knew we'd make a solid team. He freezes and shoots you a wary glance, looking for all the world like a wild animal caught in the lantern light of a racing carriage. Well, why not? Go ahead. Ifan begins counting on his fingers and muttering to himself. This goes on for quite some time. Forty-three, give or take. Ifan nods ruefully and barks a laugh. It's not a competition. It's my job. What else do you want to know? Not much, I'll tell you that. Why? What do you think of them? Sharp eyes, lad. But they can't keep the likes of us locked up too long, I'll wager. Come on, let's poke around and see if we can sniff out some blind spots in their surveillance. As you approach the unsmiling Magister, Ifan catches your arm and speaks to you with some urgency. I need to talk to this one for a few moments. Alone. Ifan strides up to the Magister, speaking in a calm and controlled voice. Though you can't hear what he whispers, the Magister's face turns whiter than snow as he hands a note to Ifan with shaking hands. D -d don't I'll give you the information. Here, just, just, d don't All right. Ifan walks back to you, leaving the quivering wreck of a Magister behind. When he catches your eye, he winks. Ifan catches you looking over at him. He raises his eyebrows. He barks a laugh, then shakes his head sheepishly. I wanted some information. That Magister wanted to negotiate. I negotiated. He swaggers right up to you until you're standing nose to nose and looks down at you, a playful twinkle in his eyes. You mean like this? Ifan bops you on the nose and breaks out laughing. He backs away, clapping you on the back affectionately. <laughs> I only do it when it's necessary, and it was necessary back there. He wanted me to kill someone. I didn't want to kill them. Being a little impolite seemed the least bad option. That's about the size of it for me, all right. And now that we agree, shall we agree to keep moving? After reading the scrap of paper he took from the Magister, Ifan marks a spot on your map and looks out to the far horizon. I'd say we're making good progress already now. If we can make it to the swamps, there's a weapon waiting for me. My contract aside, I'd say getting out from under the prying eyes of the Magisters would be helpful for all kinds of reasons. If you must. That I did. In Lucian's own army. Yeah. Stay out of their way. From the rank and file to the top brass, they're as ruthless as the wildest lone wolf. But the difference? 
A wolf never tries to hide what he truly is. There's a reason I don't wear order garb anymore. But I... I don't like to talk about those days. Thanks for understanding. Now, uh, let's keep moving. Loping up behind you, Ifan leans in to whisper in your ear. Let me do the talking here. This one's expecting me. The hooded man exudes an aura of restrained menace. As he raises his head to speak to Ifan, the hood falls back, revealing the gleaming bone visage of an undead. They speak in urgent whispers. Suddenly, the undead's bony claw pulls an elaborate crossbow from seeming thin air. It appears to be enveloped in misty shade. He proffers it to Ifan, along with a single rank-smelling arrow. Before you know it, the crossbow and arrow are tucked away in Ifan's backpack, and the conversation ends with a curt nod on both sides. Ifan knocks the crossbow with an arrow. He hoists it up to his shoulder, a satisfied smile brightening his face as he stares down the shadow-swirled stock. Raising an eyebrow, he holds it out for you to try. Care to fire the first arrow from Shadow's Eye? The arrow soars long and far, whistling a dusky tune as it flies against the breeze. It hits the target dead on, fletchings quivering with the impact. Ifan whistles a matching tune and gives you an admiring glance as he takes back the crossbow. Knew you had it in you. A good weapon's one thing, but there's nothing on Rivalon like a good companion. He smiles and mutters the phrase to himself under his breath, repeating it several times. Which of us is the night and which the dark, I wonder? Well, whichever it is, I welcome the lack of light, brother. He spins on one heel and begins to stride onwards, keen eyes scouring the environment for any dangers. He turns to wave you along, eyes glittering in the swampy gloom. The air out here is a damn sight better than in Fort Joy, eh? Seeming surprised, Ifan gladly takes the drink from your hands and downs a hefty glug. Ah, that hit the spot. He holds the flagon out to you. The alcohol hits you like the void itself. Your head spins and your feet feel unsteady. Suddenly, being stuck in a prison ruled by the despotic order doesn't strike you as the worst way to spend time. This reminds me of sharing Rotgut with Roost and the boys back at camp. <sighs> Wish they weren't so far. So tell me, if we weren't stuck here, what would you be doing with your time? And what better adventure could there be than the one we're on, eh? Relic of flame. That brew went straight to my bladder. If you'll excuse me. The air out here is a damn sight better than in Fort Joy, eh? Ifan looks at you askance, then doubles up, laughing. He wipes tears from his eyes and stutters to speak, but he can't stop laughing enough to do so. <laughs> oh, she, she, she was a fine one. You see there, she writes like a cottage innocent, but the truth is, it was she who stole everything from the chems. <laughs> she wrote that whole book to cover her tracks, so nobody had looked for the missing gold anywhere near her. She never even met Roost, though she paints quite an accurate picture of his, uh, bedroom antics. And with that, he's laughing uncontrollably again, waving you away with both hands. Lonely? I wouldn't think so. I went from life in the regiment, to life in the pack, to life on the road with you. I haven't had time to be lonely. He pauses reddening slightly as he looks at you curiously. Unless, uh, wait, what did you mean exactly? Ifan blushes fiercely and looks at the distant horizon, scuffing his boot awkwardly on the ground. Uh, let's talk about that another time. A time that's not, uh, now. You know, later. As he turns away in an uncharacteristically clumsy manner, you see that his eyes are bright and the hint of a smile hides within his beard. Ifan looks anxious, an unfamiliar look on the lone wolf. Stepping closer, he whispers urgently in your ear. I... I know who's hunting Godwoken. It's the lone wolves. He smiles at you, but his expression is grave. We're both Godwoken, 
we're on the same side. It's been making the lupine rounds for a while now. Big money for anyone who succeeds in taking out a godwoken. And I mean big money. I intend to find out. I bet we can track down my old pack and ask some questions. Last I heard, they were camped out near Driftwood. In the meantime, let's keep a lower profile. The air out here is a damn sight better than in Fort Joy, eh? Me too. Best damn friend a man could have. He whistles, and the shaggy wolf appears by his side, panting in that way that makes wolves look like they're laughing. The wolf whines and claws at the ground. Wouldn't try that if I were you. He don't take kindly to strangers. Afrit's been howling at my side a long time now. Good old boy appears any time I use sauce. You should have seen him rampage on the day the Magisters collared me. If you'd seen that, you'd know to keep your fingers as far from his jaws as you could. Me too. A god I don't believe in told me things about myself I don't believe. Yeah. Ifan chuckles and wraps his knuckles against the side of your skull hard enough to knock your head sideways. Maybe so. Whatever we believe, we still need to live in the here and now. So, let's get back to work. Ifan salutes right back, then grabs you in an unexpected bear hug. Truth be told, I couldn't have done it without your help. But you know, a contract's not complete until you hand it in. So I'm not putting my feet up just yet. Now that my contract is fulfilled, I say we get the hell off this island. I was just getting used to this seafaring life. You know, we could... Ah. Uh, from the look in your eye, I gather it's time to grab my things and get back to work. Ready. We'd probably get tired of this view soon enough anyway. Ifan grabs you by the sleeve, not hard, but insistent. Let me work on him. I've got questions that need answers. Answers I can only get from him. Ifan approaches Alexander, who lies flat on a bare wire cot. Though unconscious, Alexander's eyes are only half closed. His swollen jaw hangs open at an odd angle. Ifan grabs him by the jaw and shakes violently. Alexander's face contorts with agony and his eyes flutter, yet he doesn't return to consciousness. Why did you trigger the death fog before the elves had a chance to escape? Why? Why? No matter how loud Ifan shouts his questions, there is no response from the unconscious Alexander. He reaches his arm back, and you realize he intends to punch Alexander in the face. As if waking from a dream, he turns to you, disoriented. Hesitantly, he drops his fist until it hangs loosely by his side. Sheepish now, he scratches the side of his head with his other hand. You're right there. With a nod, Ifan strides away. It's good to be on the open seas again. Yes, but if he's God-woken like us, Maybe for now, just maybe, it's good fortune that he's still breathing. The Lone Wolves were tasked with killing Godwoken. So if we want to find out who's hunting us, we'll need to track down my old pack to get some answers. If Anne's lips curve in a sly smile, it would appear frightening, save for the bright twinkle of his eyes. No, fear not, Cub. But it tickles me no end that you're sharp enough to consider that a possibility. So, hand on my heart. We're in it together. What do you say? Ivan snorts with laughter, his eyes twinkling with amusement. I can promise to have your back every step of the way. Claws on her. But where Roost's concerned, might want to dial back some of those lofty expectations you're lugging around. He's not friendly to outsiders. Set sail for Driftwood, I reckon. From there, we can track down my old pack, and find out who's behind the contracts to kill Godwoken. He grunts approvingly. Side by side, you stare together at the wave-dashed horizon. Alexander is gone, but I don't think we've seen the last of him. To kill him again? Yes. But more than the contract, I've got questions about what really happened during the war, and I'm not going to let him die until he answers them. 
He raises one hand to shield the sun from his eyes and scans the horizon intently. As far as tracking him down is concerned, right now we're headed for Driftwood. And last I heard, my old pack were camped out near there. If anyone will know who put the contract on Godwoken, it'll be Roost. A scruffy kid bounds up and stands before you, hands on hips. He stares at your face, doubt screwing up his features. You Ben Mezd? You sure? Yep, that's just what he said you'd say, Ifan. Right oh, got a message for you. Chap called Baron Laveri wants to see you. Black Bull Tavern, first floor. The kid shoves his hands in his pockets and ambles off, whistling an off-key tune. As you approach the silken robe noble, Ifan does a double take and laughs in recognition. He pulls you to one side. I know this man, and he's not at all what he seems. A moment. Ifan bounds forward and embraces the man, all effusive greetings. As they part, talking animatedly, the man's beard slips sideways down his face. He's wearing a disguise. Ifan laughs as he straightens the beard. They chatter away for some time, using a guttural cant you struggle to understand. At one point, the man says something and looks over at you intently. Ifan waves his hand and laughs. The man hunkers down and seems to be sketching a rough map on the floor, using an apple, some playing cards and a fistful of threads pulled up from the carpet. Ifan claps the man on the back and turns to leave. Well, now we know the way to the sawmill. And we know Roost thinks I'm bringing you there as part of the Godwoken contract. Well now, how's my favorite Godwoken? An old lone wolf colleague of mine in disguise, Callow. He's hunting Godwoken, but don't worry. I didn't tell him our little secret. Poor fellow would have an attack of the bloody flux if he knew what was really going on. Ifan bites his lip and laughs. <laughs> That'll be tough for you to say without any teeth, but be my guest. Give it a whirl. Don't worry. I'm not going to hand you in for the bounty. Sure, you could do the very same to me. I think we should know who hunts us and why. Just play it cool. We go in, we get answers, we leave. Nothing more to it than that. From the glint in his eye and the wicked smile he wears, you can tell he speaks in jest. All right. It has the potential to get messy. Very messy indeed. But I've got your back if you've got mine. Ifan raises an eyebrow and folds his arms, looking every inch the man you'd hate to run into in a dark alley at night. Of course I'm afraid of things. Heights, the dark, even spiders, truth be told. I just do things anyway. The fear doesn't go away, but my body is used to the rush by now. Keep going long enough and, well, the intensity is how you know you're alive. Well now, how's my favorite god woken? Let's track down my old pack and find out who's behind the contracts to kill god woken. Can't hurt to know who wants us dead. His eyes glitter as he stands tall to tell the story, hands waving expressively. You can see it's a story he's used to telling, one he enjoys weaving for an audience. So, underneath the tavern in Driftwood, there's a place I feel right at home. A delightful little hive of scum and villainy. A few months back, I was relaxing down there after a job. Just a hint of Drudenay. You know, a hint. All of a sudden, a tiger prowls in. I jump up, but everyone else is just ignoring it. And then he picks up my scent. His eyes turn blue, and he leaps to pounce on me. A fury of claws and teeth. I flip the table and start scrambling for my crossbow. Nowhere to be found. And by now, the tiger's right on top of my eyeballs. So I do the only thing I can think of. I summon Afrit, my soul wolf. And now everybody reacts, screaming, scrambling around, pelting for the stairs, drinks flying everywhere. And that pesky tiger? Nowhere to be seen. Turns out, turns out it was Drudenay messing with me. Stronger stuff than I'm used to. Also turns out some people don't appreciate spectral wolves tearing up the place. 
so some people called magisters on me. Well, it's guarded by a grouchy-seeming dwarf name of Papa Thrash. But he's a real sweetheart once you get to know him. I love that password of his. Open minds and closed fists. I'm from the deserts of Mezd originally. My parents died when I was very young, no more than a cub. They were spice merchants, killed by bandits as we were trading on the forest roads. The elves nearby saved me afterwards. They found me hiding in a wagon and, and they took me in. If Anne bites his lip, hard enough to draw blood. They were my home until I was old enough to join the Order. Mother Melody always said I'd have a hard life. She saw it as fact, since I was born under the waxing moon. He bursts out laughing, slapping his thighs. We're two doomed peas in a pod, eh? I've been striving my whole life to prove mine wrong. To, uh, zero success. So far. If Anne smirks and shakes his head. I'll spare you the tall tales we usually tell. When a new cub joins up with the Lone Wolves, we interrogate them. Then, uh, a very complex equation decides their new moniker. I don't remember all the questions, but I remember enough to give you a Lone Wolf name if you want one. So tell me this, which of these scenes attracts you the most? If Anne nods and raises his eyebrows, a slight smile brightening his face. And then, target in sight, what's your preferred execution method? Right. If Anne scrawls something on a little piece of paper and hands it to you. On the page in thick black letters is written Silver Claw. And of course, that won't do. I'll call you, uh, Shadow Raven for the moment. For sure. Always carry a snack. If Anne reaches into his tunic pocket and pulls out a strip of dried raw meat, he takes a tiny bite and offers the rest to you. Now, what else do I have to share? If Anne rummages around the roll-down tops of his boots and grins in victory as he plucks a single mushroom from the folds. Aha. Uh -huh. He hands you the mushroom with great ceremony, bowing as he holds it aloft. Oh, I wouldn't. This one's not for eating. But I'll tell you, it comes in handy if you're dining with someone who really needs to lose their life, and soon. If Anne smiles and looks around, before reaching high into his sleeve and pulling out a tiny herbal wrap, the unmistakable scent of Drudenay hits you as he holds it out to you. The last weapon in the Lone Wolf arsenal. You know, for after the toughest jobs. He winks and tips his fingers to his temples before loping off. The grim-faced guard raises his weapon as you approach, then stops short and quickly bows respectfully. If and been missed as I live and breathe. Didn't think we'd be seeing you again so soon, sir. You wouldn't remember me, sir. But you saved my life at Tambor Brook. I still have the Anki where you stuck my big toe. He is. He'd be glad to see you too. Glad as Roost gets, anyway. He's open you'll bring friends. He winks at you so hard and so theatrically that one whole half of his face seems to squint. Roost's upstairs in the big house there, sir. He's waiting for you. Reckon he's as eager to hear how you've been uh, getting on as the rest of us. A massive man looms over a small elf, his hair a tangle of matted knots. Scars upon scars cross every inch of visible flesh, from his hands to his gnarled face. He slurps something into his mouth, thoughtfully chews for a moment, then spits it on the ground, where it lands with a sickly splat. It don't work. For me, anyway. You try. He offers her something round and slippery, like a wet white marble in the palm of his hand. I do not defile the dead. I knew an elf. We eat flesh to honor it, not to steal the secrets of the dead. Secrets, secrets, they're no fun. Secrets, secrets, hurt someone. If Anne clears his throat, Roost turns his face to you both and roughly wrenches the elf's jaw towards you as well. 
Well, look at that, elf. The silver claw is back. Ifern, old boy, you're losing your bloody touch. Your mark, Alexander, still draws breath. And my sources tell me he's headed somewhere called the Nameless Isle. I'll be setting sail there myself any day now to take him out. Your failure has put the reputation of all wolves at stake. But I suppose I might be swayed to forgiveness by the other little godwoken morsels you've brought me. Stay away from the godwoken roost. They're mine. Ifan steps between you and Roost, head high and hands wide. I can't let you take them, Roost. You know me. You know you can trust me. So believe me when I say this is bigger than any contract. That's not how it works. Let the rest of the world worry about right and wrong, good and evil. We've always had a narrower focus, and that's not about to change now. We've had good times, Ben Mezd. We've had bad times, but this is the best time of all. You, just dancing a contract right into my lap. What else are friends for? Roost moves to lunge at you, but Ifan is quicker. With two steps and three stabs, he slows Roost down just long enough for you to draw your weapon. Ifan looks uneasy, even hangdog. Ever tell you I worked with Lucian? Fact is, I was once pretty high up in his divine order. He was a good man. Trust me, today's Divine Order has nothing to do with Lucian's. Everything, everything started to go downhill during the war, right after my last mission. He closes his eyes as he speaks, forehead creasing with effort. You know sacrifices had to be made during the war? Well, Lucian knew he needed to use Death Fog to eliminate the Black Ring. But doing that would would kill the elves also. So we came up with a plan. I was to hurry through the forests with a rift portal for the elves, so they could escape before the death fog exploded. But something went wrong. I was too late. The death fog exploded just as I arrived, and the... the elves were... were... That's something I want an answer to myself. He shoots you a grateful look and the smallest of smiles. Onwards. Sighting a stocky paladin seated ahead, Ifan tugs at your sleeve. This one I remember. Hardwin and I served together back in the war. Let me do the talking. The two men embrace amicably enough, but you sense an uneasy tension running beneath their smiles. Well, as I live and scarcely breathe, if it isn't Ifan Ben Mezd. I thought you died in the death fog. I thought you died a hero. But I suppose it's better to live as one. We really gave those black ring what for, eh? Wiped them all out in the blink of an eye. Damned proud to have served with you, Ben Mezda. Damned proud. Ifan's face turns sour as he mutters something under his breath that only the paladin can hear. Hardwin loses all camaraderie and blanches, stepping backwards. He puts one hand on his weapon. You... You've changed. And for the worse, I'll not have the sacrifices of my fallen brothers maligned to my face. You survived, Ben Mester. Be thankful for that, if nothing else. Well now, how's my favorite god woken? He barks a laugh, teeth bared. <laughs> Look, I'm a simple man. Give me work I understand. Good company, open skies above me, and a boozy night in a tavern now and then. I'll be content. Only difference between being in the Order and being a lone wolf was that way back then I really believed in something. But it didn't exactly pay off. I mean, has belief ever paid off for you? He grins wider and laughs, but the good cheer doesn't quite reach his thoughtful eyes. <laughs> You've a heart as soft as a chicken's knee. Just like mine. Ifan approaches you. A drink in his hand, and a wide smile on his face. He clearly feels at home in this grimy place. Want a drink? He grins and hands you a drink, full of good cheer. 
It's really been some adventure so far, eh? One must stop to appreciate the good moments, right? And if this isn't a good one, I don't know what is. If Anne looks around at the under tavern, contentment plain in his eyes. Ah, well, plenty of drinks to be had when the world's saved. If Anne's eyebrows raise and his cheeks color beneath his beard. I'd, I'd say the same about you. I'm never lonely when you're around. If Anne smiles, shyly, it's not a familiar expression on his rugged face. He inches closer to you, so close that you can feel the heat of his body warming you. You can smell his scent, wild and animalistic. You... you're incredible. He reaches out one scarred hand to touch your face, gentle as can be. Trembling, he smiles. Closing his eyes, he moves to kiss you too. Noise erupts in the under tavern around you as patrons jeer and clap your affectionate moment. If Anne meets your eyes and laughs softly, pulling you into a bear hug. Let's try this again sometime, when there's not quite so much company. He squeezes your hand and winks, only moving away when he sees your answering smile. Well now, how's my favorite god woken? Looking at him, you are struck by the ease with which he lives in his body. His long, lean frame is relaxed, but his hands fidget, dexterously twirling a coin between each finger. He hums gently to himself. He turns to you in surprise. Seeing the look in your eyes, he freezes like a deer before carriage lanterns. A blush rises above the line of his sharp cheekbones. I... I don't even know how to begin to say what I want to say to you. But, um, you bring quite some mess into my life, and I like it. He grins, bashful, and turns back to studiously dancing the coin between his fingers. As magical energy crackles between the sorcerer's fingertips, Ifan turns to you. His mouth is set in a resolute line, but you can see anger blazing in his eyes. This is the one who crafted the Death Fog device. This is her. I have questions that need answers. You. You made the death fog that annihilated the elves. Who do you work for? How did you trick Lucian? Ifan stalks forward and grips the sorcerer by the throat, lifting her clean off the ground. She sputters and chokes, eyes bulging and hands flailing as he squeezes her neck tighter and tighter. As she gasps for breath, he shakes her. Why? Why did you trick Lucian by giving him a bomb instead of a portal? The sorcerer casts a look of mingled terror and confusion at Ifan. He releases his grip slightly, allowing her to stand once more. What? I just made the device the Divine himself ordered, I swear. And as for using it, that was all Lucian and Alexander. I was there. Lucian knew exactly what he was doing. Ifan turns white and drops the sorcerer to the ground completely. In all your adventures together, you've never seen him so shaken. Her complicity in the deaths of thousands has earned her own many times over. But it's not right for me to take the final cut. He turns to you with defeat in his eyes, and all the sorrows of the world weighing on his shoulders. She was a soldier following orders, just like me. Let her live with the torment of her actions, just as I have to. The sorcerer nods a grateful smile at you, picking herself up from the ground and backing away from Ifan. Thanks. For stopping me back there. She... she disgusts me. What kind of person would knowingly craft something like that? Lucian knew that if he asked me to deliver the Death Fog, I would have refused. Point blank. That's why he lied to me. What kind of person doesn't need the lie? What kind of person does the lying? Well, the consequences caught up with him. The consequences of Lucian's actions caught up with all of us. The Divine cared nothing for me, or for the Elves. I was just a pawn. If Alexander still lives, that son of the Void's going to wish I truly killed him the first time. If Anne sighs and glances across at you ruefully, he opens and closes his mouth several times before speaking. You know, I was fit to kill Hanag, but truth be told, she's not much worse than I am. And yet, 
You accept me. Your... your friendship means a lot. If Anne raises an eyebrow, but accepts your embrace, he pulls you close, resting his cheek on your head. When you pull away, he reluctantly parts from you with a smile. I needed that. Onwards. Did you hear what he said? The Death Fog ushered in the rise of the Void Woken, and this God King that controls them. Every day we learn more about the ills of the Death Fog, that the Divine Order detonated. The Order I served. I... I... And now we learn it also birthed something awful. Something that plagues every corner of the world. Iffen's eyes blaze with rage, and his fists are clenched so tightly the knuckles are white. As he howls his anger free, you hear the echoing howl of his trusty soul wolf. Together they roar in tandem, grief, loss and rage. When Ifan is howled hoarse, you feel his anger slink away like a whipped cur. Yet his soul wolf remains. Let's go. Redemption's not won by sitting still. Well, this place is, uh, welcoming, isn't it? I saw the mass death caused by the Divine Order's war firsthand. If Divinity can do the opposite of that, I'm interested. And if it can't, what good is it? You're right. The gods may be dead, but we still live. That has to mean something. Ifan shrugs and turns to survey the environment, squinting into the distance. I think we should find out what it is. We should keep our eyes on the prize. Divinity. Ifan claps you on the shoulder and beams at you, affection for you plain in his eyes. As you approach Alexander, Ifan catches you by the shoulder. You know how long I've sought, Alexander. I need this. Ifan strides forwards and feints a punch at Alexander's nose with his right hand. As the Divine Bishop raises his hands to protect himself, Ifan grasps both of his wrists and headbutts him. As Alexander staggers back, blood streaming from his nose, Ifan tightens his grip on Alexander's wrists and spits a question. Why? Why did you and Lucian unleash the Death Fog? Why didn't you wait? I was almost there! Alexander wrenches his hands free from Ifan's grasp and holds his broken nose, blood streaming between his shaking fingers. Why? The same reason we did everything. To protect the realm. What price all of Rivalon against just one portion? Any divine would do the same if it meant saving everything. You should be proud my father picked you. His best right-hand man. He knew you would make it. But he also knew that if he told you the truth, you would falter. He knew you well, Ifan. He knew you'd have to be tricked. But I'm his son. I can be trusted to the end, and I will take any actions necessary for the good of all. Nothing can stop me, not even death. Ifan draws his weapon. His hands are steady, calm and controlled as can be. Death stops everyone eventually. You rose from the dead once. You won't rise this time. He halts, looking you in the eye. As he lowers his weapon, he smiles a shrewd smile, all teeth and promise. For you, I can stop. For you, I can trust. Alexander knew. Lucian knew. I was nothing but a pawn. His face darkens, and his hands shake. Power truly corrupted Alexander, just as it did Lucian. He raises one eyebrow and folds his arms protectively across his chest. We'll see. We'll see. Well, this place is uh, welcoming, isn't it? Well, let's just say, not good. I don't even know what to say. If Anne pauses, staring hard at the ground. He roars, a fierce, mad glint sparkling in his eyes. All this time, to think I'd failed. To think I just didn't get there in time. When the truth of it is, as I was sent on a suicide mission, the Divine, no excuses. 
There's nothing divine about one who could do that. I can't forgive him. And I can't forgive myself for trusting him. It's a mistake I can never make up for. And one I'll never make again. Looks like we're at the end of the line. Look, divinity is an immense responsibility. All that power, it corrupts. I saw what it did to Lucian, a soldier like me. I won't let that happen to anyone else, for their sake, and the sake of Rivalon. I must ascend. You're... you're right. I can trust you. Every step of the way, you've been there for me. He nods once, decisively. I'll support you. Let's go. After all that's just happened, life, every flawed morsel of it, seems more precious to you than ever. You look around at those who have accompanied you so far. In each one, something unique shines through. Divinity has eluded you so far, but humanity, humanity beats strong within you, here and now. Who knows what lies ahead for you, for your companions? Your quest failed. The void is growing stronger, and the hall is dark. You feel the need for some affection. Perhaps they feel it too. Ifan raises an eyebrow, and his sharp teeth glint in a wide smile. Rest? With you? Yes. Let's go. As you move to go below decks, the live wood creaks and groans. The steps you thought you knew lead you to a part of the ship you've never seen before, a newly carved nook that smells of resin and wood chips. Touching the wall beneath your fingers, the live wood hums at your touch. You understand that the Lady Vengeance has carved this space for you in gratitude for your help. You enter and feel the presence of the ship recede, offering you the total privacy of a moment alone with your companion, the first moment you have been truly alone together. So, uh, here we are. Ifan laughs, full and throaty. Well, that time you slipped on Voidwoken Ikor and ended up covered in it was pretty special. Or there was that time we talked in the Under Tavern. Or the time it rained really hard in the graveyard and your clothes... Uh, I... I suppose I really like spending time with you. What's meant most to you on our journey? Ifan raises an eyebrow, but he doesn't say anything. He looks at you long and slow. The shadow of a smile tugs at the edges of his wine-dark lips. But you didn't ask me down here to talk about all that, did you? He moves closer. So close your nose is filled with his intoxicating animal scent. He catches your wrist in one rough hand. As his skin brushes yours, sauce sparks between you. You kiss Ifan once. An exploration. His lips are rough and his beard tickles. He tastes like red wine and salt. Ifan smiles and moves even closer, nuzzling at your neck with his nose. His beard tickles your reddening throat. The only sound is the whisper of fabric between your bodies. Dear one. Ifan's hands reach for your own. His magnetic eyes seek yours. You know this man. He is ruthless, capable of anything. These hands that hold your own have tortured, maimed, killed. He pulls you close to him, his hard, lean body pressing against you. He leans in to kiss you. It is not a gentle kiss. It's primal, wild even. Your lips bruise and your tongue tastes the metallic tang of blood. You... Everything is so dark, so grey. But you... You're bright. When you shine your light on me... Everything else is bearable. Ifan leans back to take in the sight of you. His dark eyes travel over every inch. He reaches out and traces the bow of your lips with his fingers. I know I shouldn't stare, but I... I just... can't stop. I wish you could see yourself as I see you now. You're incredible. He holds you close, swaying you in a gentle, slow dance. Tenderly stroking your back, he murmurs in your ear. There's no rush at all. What do you want to do? All I know is, I want you. 
He responds in kind, then pulls you down to lie on the ground beside him. Ifan growls and presses close to you, so you can feel how very much he wants this. His hot breath warms your face. He grasps your ribcage with strong, warm hands. You feel yourself lifted from the very earth into some other realm. Ifan's fierce, dark pupils fill your vision. I crave you. Every step of the way I've wanted you. Since the moment we met. I've tried to conceal it, but... I can hardly breathe around you. I've dreamed of this moment so often. You can't even imagine. My thoughts are always, always consumed by you. Your smile, your spirit, your soul. Ifan undresses you slowly, removing every last stitch of clothing from your body. The warmth of his own body ensures you feel no cold, and the warmth of his gaze ensures you feel no embarrassment. Pulling his tunic over his head, you reveal Ifan's muscular body, all scars and sinew. He grins, eager, pointed teeth parting, and embraces you, so you are completely enveloped within his strong arms. In the low lamplight, the wider world fades away. Sweat glistens where your bodies meet. There is nothing but wonder, eyes, hands, and tongues. Let's... Ifan's feral eyes glitter ravenously as he looks deep into your own. He moves into you and kisses you again. He tastes of earth, dark earth, and night. Fire runs through your veins, licking at every nerve in your body. Every movement from him sparks a charge, like chain lightning in a storm. There is nothing, nothing at all but you and him locked together. The fire inside you shivers and blazes, filling you with light and life, obliterating all the darkness within you. Ifan cries out. You. You are everything. And in that one moment, you feel it. If Anne shoots you a fond smile, warm and sleepy. That... I needed that. Glad to hear it. He embraces you tenderly, squeezing you tight before pulling away with a rueful grin. Right. Let's get back to the ship. Hello, gorgeous. Bright eyes flashing eagerly, Ifan leans in to kiss you. Ifan steps closer, pressing into you with the whole length of his body as he wraps strong arms around you. He's so warm, and a rich scent rises from him, storms and leather. He kisses you like a man starved, then nuzzles into your neck, scratching your skin with his beard. It tingles wonderfully. Just as you're wondering if he's going to take you right here and now, he pulls away with clear regret. I know, I know. We've got work to do. So, uh, what did you want to talk about? Everything. If Anne glances at you from under dark lashes, a shy smile on his lips. Even though the whole world is going to hell, for me, everything is better than before. But I can't lose you to all this. I've lost, well, everybody else. There's few enough rays of light left in this world. And you're the brightest. Ifan pulls you into his strong arms and holds you close, kissing the top of your head tenderly. Ifan cocks an eyebrow and smiles at you warmly. Can't say it wouldn't have felt good to wring the life from his neck with my own bare hands. But I trust you. You know me. You know who I am. He shrugs, face clear of all emotion. Can't leash a wolf. But you can teach him new tricks. Wolves are good that way. No need for thanks. You're still the natural choice. Well, you know what I think? We need to find Lucian, without delay. Look, about the divinity we've chased halfway across the God's damn world. Entrusted to one person, I don't think it's a force for good. The gods themselves were corrupt, and even Lucian could fare no better than them. Not to mention his son, Alexander, who the world's better off without. Even if you thought him worth sparing. Driven by fear, he took his father's power and used it to turn innocent sorcerers to silent monks in Fort Joy. And now here we are, 
like moths to a flame, not understanding that the fire will consume us. You know, when our journey started, I was a man without a purpose. I lost it in the death fog. But now, after everything we've been through together, I see what needs to be done. I say we end divinity. I say we extinguish the flame and forget about a new divine ascending. No one person should have that power. Rivalon has suffered enough. Let's share the power with everyone. And then, let's all fight the void together. If the divine can take power, the divine must also be able to give power away. I don't know quite how just yet. But then, I'm not the divine. Yet. So what'll it be? Are you with me? If Anne nods once and throws you a half smile. Well then, let's go make that happen. Hey, hey, Psst. over here. The noble looking dwarf beckons Ifan come closer. Ifan narrows his eyes, but strides over anyhow. I've heard tell of you before. You're that silver fang or something, right? Look, I know you're him. I know you can take care of problems. And I've got just the problem for you. A very lucrative one. I need you to take care of my father-in-law. The dwarf winks in an exaggerated fashion, squeezing one eye shut so forcefully it looks like his face just swallowed an eyeball. In return, Ifan raises one eyebrow, slowly. The man you speak of is not who I am, anymore. And I'll not become him again for the likes of you. Without another word, Ifan turns on one heel and strides away, leaving the aggrieved dwarf spluttering in his wake. Ifan gives you a sheepish look, all flinty eyes and hunched shoulders. That's just not the kind of business I'm interested in anymore. He nods, a faraway look in his eyes. After the death fog, I truly thought there was no point to anything anymore. But now, after all we've been through together, I've got a new purpose. Stopping divinity. Ifan cocks an eyebrow and smiles at you warmly. After we tear divinity off its pedestal, and we spread its powers to the people, like the fresh green shoots that push through the earth after a forest fire. Maybe what those shoots grow into will be better than the weeds they're replacing. Can't be worse. You've time still. <laughs> Ifan barks a laugh and cracks his knuckles. I got there years ago. The important thing to remember is, keep looking up. I didn't do that. I spent too long wallowing in the muck. But now, now I can feel the promise of change whisper on the wind. I can feel the sun on my face, urging me to grow. Everybody in life makes choices. I'm tired of doing what others want me to do. I'm choosing to go a different way now. I've made mistakes and compounded them, but now, now there's a chance to make amends, and I intend to seize it. You catch a glimpse of Ifan out of the corner of your eye. He's standing tall, gazing around the environment with a feral expression on his face. He reaches his arms overhead, stretching his lean frame. Not for the first time, you wonder how anyone's expected to concentrate on what they're doing with this man hanging around, exuding raw energy. He catches you looking at him and smiles, all tangled beard and twinkling eyes. Surprised at first, he quickly responds to your touch, pulling you close and holding your face in his scarred hands. My darling, you really brought some mess into my life, and I've loved it. And you. Ifan holds you so close that you feel you are part of him. He kisses your eyelids, your temples, your nose. He kisses you tenderly, exploring you with his tongue. Before he pulls away, he squeezes tighter, lifting you from the ground so you feel weightless. Damn, the end of divinity can't come soon enough for me. I'm ready to live, to live a human life. So here we are, the end of it all. Ifan reaches out to hold your hand. 
Nobody I'd rather see this whole thing through with. I trust you. I trust your judgment. Nifan smiles and kisses you on the cheek. Well then, let's do this. Together. Ifan keeps your hand held tight in his own as you stride, one damned intimidating pair, to what awaits. Ifan beams at you, his blood-streaked face more jubilant than you've ever seen it. He reaches out and pulls you into a bear hug, clapping you on the back. We did it. The odds were against us. Hell, the gods were against us. And still, still we did it. Ifan grasps your face in his hands and kisses you exuberantly. Sauce crackles between you and in the air all around you. The world has changed. Now we'll see something. We'll see what happens when everyone can harness their own divinity. Me either. I knew it. From the first time I met you, I knew you were special. And this proves it. With a world full of sorcerers, we should be able to make short work of the Void Woken. That's... that's an idea. He reaches out and takes your hands in his own, rough fingers caressing your wrists. I want that more than anything. Ifan nods, and his eyes brighten. He looks different somehow, as if the vestige of command has returned to this ex-soldier. We'll need supplies. Source-forged steel, war owls, a central command from which to run sorties. What do you think? Is Arx the right location? Seeing the look on your face, he laughs and shakes his head. <laughs> Old habits die hard. But I'm willing to bet these Voidwoken will die harder. With that, Ifan embraces you fiercely. As your source mingles together, you feel the memories of your night together caressing your body. The world can wait just a little longer.